Now in today's video we're going to take a look at this uh, little Netgear antenna that I picked up uh, some time ago now off of uh, eBay and I picked it up thinking it was a directional antenna, a little uh, panel kind of uh, type antenna that we could look at but it is uh, an omnidirectional antenna, it's got 5 dB of gain um, here's the uh, serial number there if you want to look that up and when I found out it was an omnidirectional, the seller did, by the way, uh, list it as a directional antenna. It's only when I got it and uh, looked on the back. Um, it kind of makes me think, what is the point of this? I mean, it's uh, 5 dB of gain. Um, where's my other antennas? There you go. I found one. It's white as well. Um, but this is 5 dB of gain as well. And, uh, you know, it's omnidirectional. The same as uh, this, apparently. So you have to ask yourself... What is the point of this? Why would you need it over one of these? Which, you know, these are a lot cheaper as well. Um, this was quite expensive back in the day. And in fact, there are some sellers um, on uh, some websites right now asking 60, 70 pounds for this plus shipping. So you have to ask yourself, what is the point? So let's take it over to the network analyzer and see how well it works at um, uh, 2.4 gigahertz Wi-Fi. And then uh, we'll open it up and take a look inside because uh, it has got me a little bit curious to what will be in this. So here is the uh, antenna then on the test bench and uh, I'm looking at the uh, network analyzer from here and I'm getting a readout on the network analyzer that I didn't really expect. So looking at the uh, output then I'm scanning from uh, 1.8 gigahertz here all the way up to three gigahertz over here we've got this massive dip in the frequency response here I've got the cursor uh, back on uh, 245 there 245 gigahertz so this in this area here this is the Wi-Fi spectrum we can see the return loss is at 1.055 um, it's an okay return loss, I haven't got a problem with that. If I built an antenna with that kind of a return loss, I'd be quite happy with it. Um, it is wide, as I say, but you can see how the return loss jumps up as we go further up the spectrum there. You know, 2.8 gigahertz there, um, we're getting into a really poor return loss. But uh, just look how wide it is. And then we've got this second harmonic here which is at two gigahertz again uh, the return loss is uh, 1.088 which again is not bad at all and uh, yeah it's i mean it is a wi-fi antenna it's not for cellular networks but uh, it does look quite good and it is quite wide so maybe you know when i uh, come well putting this antenna down a little bit in the introduction they're saying what is the point of this antenna um, yeah, it is only 5 dB, but it's quite a few applications it could be used for with it being such a wide frequency response there. Really interested to see what's going to be on the inside of this antenna. So as you saw on the network analyzer then, it uh, performs really well at uh, 2.4 gigahertz. Quite a wide um, area of operation uh, along those frequencies and that uh, second harmonic as well. I did check off camera to see how it performed at the lower frequencies um, because I did think oh maybe it, uh, if it performs quite well down at those lower frequencies it could be classed as a kind of one for all antenna for the cellular networks and uh, 2.4 gigahertz Wi-Fi but it doesn't perform well down at the bottom end so I wouldn't go that far. Um, it did get a quite a nice response um, uh, around the GPS frequencies but uh, because it's a linear antenna and GPS is circular um, yeah linear antennas do exist for GPS but they tend to have a little bit of a um, an amplifier attached to them to you know compensate for the mismatch on polarization but uh, yeah it did have a spike in that area but uh, yeah it was quite a wide frequency of operation certainly uh, seemed that it would work well at uh, 2.4 gigahertz wi-fi anyway so let's crack this open and take a look at what's on the inside it doesn't have any screws so uh, it looks like i'm gonna have to pry this open okay so this video went from uh, what's the point to very very interesting pretty quickly basically as soon as i got the uh, 
lid off the case here. Um, I'm not sure what we're seeing here. I mean, I've never seen anything like it before. Um, I mean, I personally wouldn't class this as a directional antenna, uh, as an omnidirectional antenna. I would certainly class this as a uh, directional antenna. I mean, it's got a back reflector and a separate driven element. They're not short. It's not a shorter design. They are completely separate. I mean, uh, it's front to back ratio. I would put it about, um, you know, based on what I know, at 70%. 70% coming in this direction and 30% going from the back so yeah I wouldn't class it as omnidirectional because it's not uniform uh, 360 degrees it's never going to be but I mean we, we've got the driven element here and then we've got a right angle bend going back we've also got a right angle bend on the back reflector there they're not touching but uh, they're pretty close so I mean we might have some capacitive coupling going on there I mean uh, yeah, let me see if I can uh, remove the rest of this case. It seems to be stuck in there really, really strong with some kind of double-sided tape or something. But let's try and get some measurements. I'm definitely going to make a PDF of this. I wasn't going to bother uh, before turning the video camera on and taking a look on the inside. But uh, now I'm definitely going to have to make a PDF of this design. Let's see if we can get the rest of it out. So I've taken the measurements and I've just roughly jotted them down before I make the PDF. So you can see them here. Um, the overall length of this back reflector is 78.3 millimeters. Then we've got this uh, right angle bend here. This is where the uh, dotted line is. That's 9.7 millimeters here. Um, this one at the bottom here, we've got these two tabs here and this is the cutout. And they are 3.9 millimeters long here um, it's 36.9 millimeters wide that's uniform all the way down very very interesting the uh, main driven element is uh, as an overall length of 47 uh, millimeters from here to here just imagine it if we straightened it out uh, this first right angle bend here uh, where the dotted line is that's 12 millimeters so 12 millimeters down there and then we come to the feed point at the bottom here we've got a couple of bends both five millimeters each and then we have the feed tab coming in here and this feed tab is 18.4 millimeters in length and it's exactly six millimeters in width and we've also got a cutout just here and here so very interesting as i said um yeah, I wasn't expecting this uh, when uh, I first uh, took a look at uh, the antenna itself. I was wondering uh, what the point of it was compared to a normal omnidirectional antenna. But yeah, let me know in the comments. Would you class this as an omnidirectional antenna? Because I wouldn't. I know we've got uh, Netgear claiming it is omnidirectional 5dB, but I wouldn't class it as that at all. I mean, it's it's... It's strange, but it is a very interesting design. I want to play around with this in the future. As I said, I'll make a proper PDF up of the measurements for you to download, but it's very, very intriguing. Um, definitely this cutout here and that, that 6mm feed, that's what's giving us a better uh, return loss on the network analyzer with the cutout as well. But, um, you know, what are these tabs really doing? Um... As I said, we're not touching here at the top. We have got... I haven't measured that. Just uh, get the ruler. That looks to be a 2mm gap. Possibly 3. I'll have to get the calipers on it. Um, yeah, it's uh, interesting and intriguing. I will definitely have a go at uh, replicating this and then playing around with it. I mean, what if we put some parasitic elements on the front of here? Get some more gain out of it. and Yeah possibilities are endless and one thing that I forgot to mention is the gap between here um, is 16.7 millimeters and that again kind of conforms to a gap that you would tend to have on a bike for 2.4 gigahertz I try and aim for something around 15 millimeters but 16.7 is fine I mean uh, yeah we can play around with reducing that gap possibly uh, see how that changes the frequency and uh, 
the return loss as well it looks like we've got some kind of foam dielectric space in there so uh, yeah it's, uh, it's interesting so an unexpected video went from uh, you know what's the point to very interesting very very quickly indeed and I uh, hope you enjoyed it as well as much as I did very very surprised when I opened it up and uh, I do like it so you know if you did enjoy this video please give it a thumbs up comment your questions below and uh, I'll do my best to answer them especially let us know if you know uh, anything more about this particular design and why you think we've got these uh, right angle bends overlapping here and that sort of thing you know any ideas on what that's doing is that making it omnidirectional I don't know but uh, yeah very very interesting so if you did enjoy it as I said please give it a thumbs up and hopefully you'll join me on the next one